Hello, and welcome to the Writer's Desk. My name is Lisa Soland, and I have the privilege and honor of sitting with my friend and fellow colleague playwright today, Debbie Lemedman. And we're here in the beautiful Encino, California at Theater Encino, which, by the way, your work and my work has been produced here. That's right. I was uh, lucky enough for two years running to have two separate 10 minute plays. Um, the first and second annual theater in Seattle. That's right. You got, you got a run going. I do, I do. Uh-oh. <laughs> and the first year was Valentine's weekend, and, and the theme was love. Love. Easy. Easy. And, and so my tenant play, Just Add Love, was in that. And then this year was Transplantation Society. Transplantation Stories Society. of Change. That's right. We both had plays in it. And we were both in the, yes. Where's some wood? We got to knock on wood. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> my head. That one was called That Would Be Old. And yeah, I, I love it here. Oh, oh yeah. Gonna, a charm. We should start writing now. <laughs> the Debbie and Lisa show. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, we've been friends for how long? Five about, years. About, I met you. About five yeah. years. Yeah. Great. And we met because you took the All Original Playwright Workshop. I remember very clearly. I had done a playwright in residence in uh, Fargo, North Dakota. Uh, I was Fargo? working with Fargo, Fargo. I can't do it. I can't do the accent. Um, and I came back thinking that, that all the people that in Fargo had met me as an act, a uh, writer. See, see, I hadn't completely wrapped my head around that identity as a writer identity. Because you started out your career as an actress. Yes, like, like many playwrights do. Just like you. Like me, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, writing, I think, suits me much better. Mm -hmm. And um, but acting taught me everything I know, how, how to yes. write plays. So yeah. it's all it's all been the foundation. Mm -hmm. And I came back and I thought I wanted to submerge myself, and I also wanted to meet LA writing community. And I googled Los Angeles writing workshops, and your name came up first. Top? Top. Beginning. Yeah. Lisa wow. Solon. There so she was. you said she must be good. She must be good. She's <laughs> at the top of the Google search. All, all original playwrights workshop. So I went on your website. I read about you, emailed you. You got back to me like that. Oh, I good. believe we talked on the phone mm -hmm. and, and we scheduled a Starbucks meeting and... And now I, we're in the same Mutual Admiration Society. Yeah, I did. I was the president of Mutual Admiration Society <laughs> when, uh, when I first met you. Yeah, and I just knew that I had to take it. And what are the, some of the things in your life that influenced you in your journey to become a playwright? Um, well, I was uh, born and raised in Levittown, New York. I'm a Long Island girl. <laughs> but we moved to California when I was a teenager with my family. And uh, so I did my high school in the Valley. So I'm kind of a Long Island girl and a Valley girl too. Ooh, so you can kind of go totally. both ways. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I tried to have no accent whatsoever. You did good. Oh, good. good. <laughs> so I always wanted to be in theater. And for as long as I can remember. And, uh, and acting just seemed the right choice at the time. When I was younger, I was in desperate need of attention. That's changed, believe it or not. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> yes, thank it's God. Life's easier when you don't. You, it is. Yeah. It is. It's nice to take a back seat. So I, uh, I went to acting school. I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts for training. I went to Cal State Northridge, got my bachelor's in theater. Nice. Went to Brandeis University for graduate school, so I have an MFA in theater, and went to New York with my little suitcase. And I'm gonna take Broadway by storm. Great. Well, I had a great run. In New York, I did. And I had some good gigs as acting gigs. Now, so you went to New York as an actress I to did. make it as an actress. I did. Playwriting wasn't even in the. Well, not, well, sort of. Okay. Because. A little bit. When I was at Brandeis, I was, I'm a character actress, it's so very obvious, and I never liked the parts I got. You're cast too quirky. In. I'm way too for quirky. For a leading lady. Well, I don't want to be. Lead, leading Four. ladies, yeah. Yeah. I'm a quirky girl. So I, I but I didn't like how I was getting cast. So my mentor at Brandeis said, so write your own show. Hmm. Which i sure I was deer in the headlights. Say his name. We got it. Susan Dibble. That's a woman. Susan Dibble. Got to give her credit. Brandeis University. She told me, write your own one-woman show. I, I love her. I don't know her. You and I, and would I love her. Love her. <laughs> she touches, anything she touches turns to art. Oh. She's sort of this ethereal woman, soft-spoken, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. She's incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, I love her dearly. Mm -hmm. And she really t should take credit for launching me as a writer. I wrote, she said, you have to think of an umbrella 
of something, a theme, what you really are passionate about. And it was food. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and you've written a lot of projects. Well, that's where it came from. One of my favorite plays of yours. It's Fat Girls? Is that the one you're talking about? Fat Girls. That they what? did at Florida State? Yes. Yeah. That was my one woman show. I just, I just want to tell our listening and viewing audience that this is one of my all time favorite plays is Debbie Lamedman's Fat Girls. And when I was teaching, heading up the MFA playwriting program at Florida State, a bunch of very enthusiastic women uh, actually produced this play. And Debbie was kind enough to get on the telephone with them. We all piled into this small little office. <laughs> I would have gotten on a plane if I could have. I would have oh, loved to so have seen great. it. They uh, did a great job. It's, it's a great play, I just want to say. Well, it, it, it started as a one-person show. And, um, and I played all the characters, and I did it when I was at Brandeis, a student at Brandeis. Wow. And it's really just the trials and tribulations of, of initially me dealing with food and using it as my crutch. And being an actor, you're always told, I was always told, you have to lose 20 pounds or gain 20 or, uh-huh. I mean, like that was going to make me a different actor if I was thinner or fatter. I was always sort of in the middle. Either get fatter or get thinner, but we don't like you the way you Because are. no people are that way. Right. So you got to change. Right. You have to change. <laughs> well, after getting my skin thicker and thicker and thicker, <laughs> uh, I wrote this one woman show and played about 15 different characters. Wow. Then I took the show. When I moved to New York, I went. I did. I performed it a couple of times at different venues, and it kept changing, and the monologues kept changing where I was, and I, I performed it once feeling very thin, and then I performed it once feeling very fat, and I, it was crazy. Then I moved back to California after New York. I needed a break from New York City. It, it, it takes a toll. Many artists go back and forth between New York and L.A. Well, I, I think that I've told my students, if you young people who have dreams of Broadway, if you want to be successful in New York, you have to be able to leave it from time to time. It's mm -hmm. relentless, that mm -hmm. energy. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's nice to take a drive into the country or something <laughs> and just rest a little bit. It's a very powerful city. So my family's all back in California. I came back to California, put fat, it was called fat, P-H-A-T. I put it on the shelf. And then a friend of mine said, do you have a play for women? And I said, no. And he said, yes, you do. You have that one woman show. And I said, well, it's, it's one woman. And he said, but it's multiple characters. What do you think about fleshing out the characters and making it for an ensemble? Which is what I did. I thought it was going to take no time at all. It took me almost four months to, uh, four months. to, to flesh it out and wow. create the play that you know now as Fat Girls. It went from fat to fat girls, P-H-A-T. And where was that first produced? Actually, I was teaching at the California Conservatory of the Arts in San Juan Capistrano, no longer in existence, I'm sorry to say. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, I take that back. It was initially produced as a reading at University of Central Florida, where my friend is a teacher. Great. And that's in Orlando. And it was, we just did a reading of it. And I was, I can't tell you how nervous I was. It was my baby was being born. I'd never <laughs> seen it before, and it was so personal. Mm -hmm. And to put your life on stage like that, I was kind of freaking out. <laughs> yeah, but aren't those the good plays? Oh, well, yeah. yeah. The ones yeah. you sweat over. And well, what was so very... amazing was the reaction that other women had coming up to me, crying, saying, that's my story, or... Oh, I, I had anorexia, I had bulimia, I overeat, I use food. And their stories resonated because, you know, we all have what, these what, issues. Well, now, when that started to happen, when you got that response from the public or the audiences, what did that tell you about your play? It told me that you need to write from your heart. I wasn't trying to create a commercial piece. I wasn't trying to concoct or contrive some amazing piece of work. I wrote an honest portrayal of what I had experienced, and it's the human condition. It it's, is the human condition. Yeah. You so, nailed it. Yeah, and that's what it told me. And I have to keep going back to that. When in, in works after that, I think I'm trying too hard, trying too hard. What does your heart say? Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that adage, write what you know, you have to write what you know. Yeah.